so this has been a very, very interesting time with the Pixel 6 Pro. I've had this phone for weeks. I had it about a week before it even launched, so quite a good while now. It's very uncharacteristic of me to not have a full review by this time, and that's because I've had so many concerns, so many questions, and some issues when it comes to the Pixel 6 Pro. Asterix, caveat, whatever, parentheses, I really like this phone. And that's why it's been so difficult because I've had to sit here and go, okay, do I like this phone so much because it's new, it's shiny, or is it because I legitimately enjoy the experience and I think that there's something here that's special? And I think that that's a little bit of both. I, the phone from the get-go, I didn't like it. Whenever they announced it and they're like, this is what the phone looks like, I'm like, okay, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this. And then it kind of grew on me and then I got it in person. I'm like, you know what? I kind of like it. And whenever you look at it, what they put into it, the Tensor chip, the 50 megapixel camera, of course it bends down to like 12.2, the 5,000 milliamp battery, Quad HD+, 120 hertz refresh rate, there is so much here. And it's the phone we've waited for so long for Google to make because there's always been something. It's always been, well, it's, it's good, but this. Well, they did this right, but that. And I think that the Google Pixel lineup is probably the most criticized mainstream phones out there that we've had for years. But I think they did a lot of things right here, despite the fact that there are some Android 12 hangups, despite the fingerprint sensor, despite there's no facial recognition. There are some things where you look at this phone and it's classic Google and you go, what are these guys thinking? But that doesn't mean it's not a good phone. It doesn't mean you shouldn't consider buying one. And I'm going to talk about my thoughts and my feels and everything when it comes to this phone in this video. It's going to be a long video, so I'm going to caution you now. But if you want to learn about it, then stay tuned because I'm going to go and really talk about this phone. There's a lot here to discuss. Before we get into that, though, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about the Pixel 6 Pro. So from the get-go, as soon as you take this phone out of the box, you're going to be really impressed with the way that it looks. You're going to take it out and you're going to go, wow, I had the Pixel 5, I had the Pixel 4. They all feel kind of plasticky, or they are plastic in reality. And you get this, and it's got everything you could ask for. They threw the kitchen sink at it, with the exception of facial recognition, which I don't understand. Apparently there's some scuttlebutt out there now saying that it supports it, but it just wasn't ready. I hope that they find some way to enable this. But looking at it objectively, it's a very good phone. There are some hangups, but most of them are Android 12 related. And yes, it's it's kind of hard to separate the hardware from the software when that's what it runs. It's running Android 12. But at the same point in time, I think they nailed it when it comes to the hardware experience, absent the fingerprint sensor. And you're probably wondering, what's the deal with the fingerprint sensor? Well, apparently, it's not... Pr Apparently, it's running the way that they, the Google has intended it to. The issue is they have a lot of security algorithms running in the background that make it more secure. We like that. Security is good. But sometimes, it just doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. And then sometimes it does. So it can be a frustrating experience. I know people personally who have taken this phone back because the fingerprint sensor is so problematic. It's hit or miss, especially when you put a screen protector on it. But without the screen protector on it, it does work better. And even still, it still has my primary SIM card in it. And it's not just because Google sent it to me for free to review. I went out and I bought the Pixel 6, which I've got right here because I was so impressed with the 6 Pro, I wanted to take a look at the 6. And that's going to be a separate video. But so many things they did here right. The cameras, they're pretty darn good. I mean, it's got a really large sensor in it. It's got a 50 megapixel camera. You've got the ultra wide. You've got the telephoto with the four times optical zoom. You got the new selfie camera on the front. I mean, it's a very, very pleasant experience. Android 12, it runs pretty seamlessly. Most of my hiccups and heartaches I've had have been with Creator Studio, which is a YouTube app which YouTubers like myself use. I haven't run into this problem with any other app. Very seldom if I'm not using the Creator Studio YouTube Studio app, 
it doesn't really crash. It doesn't really give me user interface problems. I know some people have had some. That stuff, not giving them an excuse here, but it's going to get better. They're going to be able to fix that stuff. It's just software tweaks. We run into those problems with Samsung. We run into those problems with Android, with iOS phones. And that's something I made a complete separate video about. They should have waited to launch this phone until, if they waited three or four more weeks, they probably could have had facial recognition working. They could have figured out some of the bugs with the fingerprint sensor. They could have cleaned up Android 12 a little bit more, but they wanted to rush it out and this is what happened. So the phone itself is beautiful, really, really gorgeous. And you've got this 6.7 inch AMOLED display under the screen fingerprint sensor, 120 Hertz refresh rate. It's really nice. It's very enjoyable to use 5,000 milliamp battery. There have been a lot of reports about screen on time and about battery life. And most of that came, it wasn't even a problem until MKBHD said he's getting like three hours of screen on time. And I just had to scratch my head and think, how is that even possible? Because I am like the biggest person in the world that complains about battery life and screen on time. And here I am routinely getting six hours. Even when I leave the house and go on 5G, I'm still getting just over five hours of screen on time, which is exceptional because I tested out the Note 20 Ultra. I tested out the Fold 2, the Fold 3, the S21 Ultra, and even the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 9. And none of them would get me six hours of screen on time. So that's basically the bare minimum for me. If a phone gets six hours of screen on time, the way I use it, I'm not using adaptive battery, uh, adaptive brightness. I've got the screen basically 80 to 100% all the time. Even with 5G, I think it's very, very solid. I know some people are having different experiences. I don't know if this is just the way people are using the phone, if there's stuff running in the background. If, I'm not sure. I can't explain that. I can only tell you about the phone that I have. And it's been really solid for me, other than a couple of things like the Creator Studio app, which isn't going to affect somebody who's not a YouTuber using that app. So I give it a strong thumbs up because at $899, it gives you everything that you can ask for. You get basically everything that you're going to get in the S21 Ultra, everything you're going to get in the iPhone 13 Pro. Yeah, they have their own little things that they do that are different. But at $899, it's hard not to look at it and go, yeah, that's a good phone for $899. So I've been using it. My SIM card's still in it. I'm not really inclined to take my SIM card out of it other than the complaints I had about YouTube Creator Studio, which there was an update yesterday. It seems to have improved some, but it's still not fixed. So yes, there's no facial recognition. I can't really explain that in a way. That's a big ding that I got to give it because it doesn't make sense in the year 2021, on the end of 2021, going into 2022, it should really have had it. But from a hardware perspective, fundamentally, you get IP68 dust and water resistance, 5,000 milliamp battery. You get Bluetooth. You get NFC for your wireless contact payments, 5,000 milliamp battery with good battery life, a 6.7 inch big, beautiful display, Android 12. You're going to get like five years of support for the phone, which probably means four years of operating system updates. This is going to be good till like Android 16. I mean, they just officially stopped supporting the Pixel 3, and that one's been around for a while. So if you're looking to get it, if you go into a carrier store, you see it on the back shelf and you go, okay, they've got some good carrier incentives. They've got some good financing options. They've got some good trade-in deals. They've got nice prices. Should I consider this over an S21 Ultra, an S21 Plus? Should I consider this over an iPhone 13 Pro, Pro Max? I think there's some merit to it. It takes really good pictures. There are some fundamental things going on though. I made a video about this because when you take up close pictures, Due to the size of the camera sensor, it has a poor depth of field up close. It gets blurry because the sensor is so big, you get it too close. But also when you back it up a little bit farther, it still doesn't always take the right picture because the focus is very, very aggressive on what is directly in front of it. If you've got like a bouquet of flowers, it's if you've got one that sticks out in front, it's going to latch onto that one and then blur a lot of the other stuff out. And sometimes that's inconsistent especially when you're taking pictures of certain types of objects. So I haven't had the most amazing experience when it comes to close-up pictures. They needed a macro lens on here, not because the primary camera is necessarily bad, but because it has limitations. And as much as people like to take up-close pictures of things, I'm not talking like this close. I'm talking like this close or even this close. It can sometimes not give you the best image because it's going to focus on the closest part of the image or the object, really. So I've had issues with that. I've made them abundantly aware. Check out the video. You can see it here. I'm not going to dive into that too much in this one. There's a lot to talk about here. 
Battery life is good. Screen is beautiful. Day-to-day -day experience. It lasts me from basically when I unplug it in the morning until the evening time. And for a normal person who doesn't use the phone six hours, like I'm talking of having the screen on, actively using it for six hours in a 12-hour window, you're going to be good. If your phone normally lasts you a day, this one might last you a day and a half. They did a lot into getting this phone right. Now, there have been some transient heat issues, but one thing that I've noticed, normally if you've got an Android phone and it heats up and it gets really hot, the battery life starts getting sucked out of it like somebody's using a straw. And even when this one gets hot, it doesn't seem to impact the battery too much, which is kind of an anomaly I've not experienced before. At least this is my own experience. So when you have it on 5G and you're like watching 4K video and streaming it for a long time, when you're recording 4K video for extended periods of time, when you're using it as a hotspot, there are certain times where it will get really hot. And like if you're using GPS, I used mine on GPS. I picked it up in the car. I was like, holy goodness, this thing is incredibly hot. But it doesn't seem to kill the battery too much. Like in the Pixel 3 or the Pixel 4, or even the Pixel 5, it would just suck the battery out of it if, if you were using that stuff and it was getting really hot. So I haven't made it shut down. I haven't gotten it to do that. I've seen some other videos. I got a buddy, Frankie Tech, and he did a like an Antutu uh, test on it. And after he ran it like three times, it started throttling because it got so hot. But that's very, very not normal. That's something where you're like pushing it 100% over and run the test and then run the test again and run tests again and then it's and then it throttled it because of heat so i don't think you can duplicate that without running a benchmark testing software on the phone i, I don't think playing games i don't think there's anything you can do on here that's going to really create that scenario so it's interesting it's problematic and a concern that you wouldn't think it would do that but at the same point in time i haven't had any reliability or consistency issues with the performance or how it runs so I've been enjoying using it. I like taking photos with it. It takes some amazing portrait photos. You get night sight. You get the magic marker. The Google translation on here is, is clutch. You can talk into it and convert it to another language and talk to somebody else. It's really cool. The voice to text is unbelievably good. It's so good. You talk to it. It picks it up. You don't have to slow down. It's not one of those things where you have to go, I am sending you a text message for it to pick up. You can be like, hey, I'm sending you a text message. This phone is really cool. It's working great. And it just reads it off and prints it like it's nothing. And that's what you get with a Google phone. A lot of the software side of stuff, a lot of the AI and machine learning that's built into it, which that was the priority from the get-go. When you look at the benchmarks, it's about 10% slower than the Snapdragon 888. But that to me is like, that not big of a deal because you're never tapping into that power and it actually runs some stuff faster than the Snapdragon 888. And I think the GPU is actually better. So taking a look at this phone, the whole of the, the the whole picture, the whole image, is it any good? Should you consider buying one? Are there too many problems that I would say don't get one? And the answer is no. It's not too problematic. It will get fixed very soon if it if you're still having those issues because of the software. And it, um, funny enough, you can't even hardly find one of these anywhere right now. So it might not be an issue. But at eight ninety nine, and then you look at the Pixel Six at five ninety nine. What Google did here is something special in the smartphone world because normally prices always go up and they found a way to make these cheaper in a world where the distribution and the materials and the manufacturing is all slowed down, brought this phone to market and is competing really, really well. And it gives you, I think, a viable third option, which is what we want. We don't just want Samsung. We don't just want iPhone. If you've been using a Pixel phone before, you probably really love this phone. I like it a lot. I'm not even a big Pixel fan. Like, don't tell Team Pixel that. I, mean, I like the hardware. What I mean to say is I've always found stock Android kind of boring. And with the changes that they've made to Android 12, I like it. I like the way it looks. I like how fluid it is. I like that it has 120 hertz refresh right now. I don't have to compromise. I would always get the bleeding, cutting edge of technology with the Samsungs because they get the biggest camera sensors. They get the fastest screens. They get the biggest battery. And now you have all that in a Pixel phone at a cheaper price. It's built really well the premium quality it's nice it's impressive if only they had better third-party accessories to get for it i would feel more comfortable about it because there's just a bunch of no-name stuff out on amazon that's very a lot of question marks i use this crave case that's less than 15 bucks and i like it you can check the link down in the description and get that if you want to know what case i'm using but by and large i was worried from the get-go 
months ago, once they announced it and all the hype machines started spooling up, I thought this phone is being set up for failure. And in some ways it was. But largely Google set it up for failure. I think they told everyone, hey, the phone is going to be here too soon. Like they tried to undercut some of the rumors and the leaks and said, look, here's what we have. Which is, hey, you can play your cards that way. But it gave the expectation that it was coming much sooner. And then we still had to wait like three months. And then once it showed up, you couldn't get one. So there are some things that are problematic in the launch. Things that are problematic and questionable the way Google handled them. But at the end of the day, did they make a good phone? Is it an enjoyable experience? Is it top notch? Is it a flagship phone? And on all four of those things, I have to check the box and go, yes. And again, I'm still using it. Despite the few issues I've had here and there, I really enjoy it. It's a very refreshing and distinct experience from Samsung and from Apple with the iPhones. And at the price point and what they bring to the table, the cameras, the full battery of everything you get, big battery life, big screen, high refresh rate, high protection value. It's got everything you could finally ask for other than the headphone jack that's missing, but, oh, and also expandable storage. I wish it had those. Unfortunately, you're stuck with a 128, a 256 or a 512 model. 512s are very, very hard to find. And basically they're all hard to find right now, but that's kind of the way things are going now. There's no charger in the box, no expandable storage. I, I don't know why we're living in this world now. I think at the prices that we're paying, we should still have those things. I feel like we're being ripped off, but I don't think this phone's a rip off. I think if you're interested in it, you're probably going to like it a lot. If you're concerned about some of the things that need to be polished, wait a couple of months and come back. It may even be cheaper at that point. Like historically, when it comes around to like Black Friday, it's always a couple weeks after the phone comes out and the return window is over and Google's like, gotcha, price, lot, price drop. <laughs> and that could very well happen. I wouldn't be surprised. Keep an eye on it for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and that whole week. But at $899, I think it's a great value. At $599, I think it's a, a stellar value for the Pixel 6. I've still got to make my Pixel 6 video. There's some good stuff here that I think people are going to be happy about and get past all of the overhyped stuff, get past the nitpicking and the excessive criticism. Is there fair criticism to make about this device? Yes. Is there fair criticism to make about most devices? Yeah, there is. This one... They went back to the drawing board. We've got a new chip. We've got a new design. Everything is new. It's not like, oh, we took last year's phone and we just tweaked a few things. This is a completely new thing from the ground up. And one thing that I was thinking about earlier in talking, as the phone matures, it gets more features. When you buy a Samsung phone or an iPhone, that's basically it. They're not going to add anything to it later. As Google comes out with new stuff, new features, new updates... Just like with the previous phones, when astrophotography came out, when Night Sight came out, when all these different things came out, they get retroactively applied. So this phone is still in its infantile stages. Over the next few years, as new flagship phones drop, as new features drop, you're going to get them the same day as the operating system comes out for everybody else. So this phone, I think, is going to be perfectly good for four or five years. I have a lot of faith in it, even though there's been some hangups. I've even pointed them out myself. I don't like that you can't take pictures up close very well without using the telephoto. I don't like it doesn't have expandable storage. I don't like it doesn't have facial recognition. I don't like that the fingerprint sensor is not that great. But it is what it is, unfortunately. I wish that they would have made some different changes there. I'm hoping that we'll see the, the facial recognition activated later. That would be great. I'm hoping that they can make the fingerprint sensor better. But you have to look at it right now as it is. And as it is now, would I still recommend it? Yes, I would. And I still think that they're both fantastic phones, the Pro and the regular 6. And I'm probably still going to keep my primary SIM in mind. I'm rocking this one and my Duo 2 right now is my secondary phone with my other SIM card in it. And I really like it. It's still an enjoyable experience. Even getting close to a month later, I like it a lot. And I, I just, there, I had to test out all these things. I had to take my time. It was too polarizing of a device. There were too many question marks out there that really needed to be answered. And I've made videos on them. I went back. I made a video about the battery life. I made a video about the camera. I made a video about a lot of different things. And that's why I'm here now saying, look, there's not a lot of flashy B-roll. This is just me here talking, giving you my evaluation on the Pixel 6 Pro. And I like it a lot. I think it's very good. I'm still going to keep using it. So if I tell you that I think that you should buy it if you're interested in it, I'm not a salesman. I'm not being paid for this. This is just me doing my due diligence with the phone and coming to a conclusion that it's only going to get better. I think it's okay as it is. And I think that even with the limitations 
it still provides a very good experience. And then, of course, the Titan M2 security chip, it's about as secure as you can get when it comes to Android. I know there are going to be some people saying, oh, Google, Google. Yeah, Google is not going to let other people get access to your information. They may take your information, but that's inherent in all Android phones because they're all Android's designed and made by Google. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's just the way of the world. Apple takes your information. Google takes your information. Everybody does. As long as third-party bad actors are not taking it and your phone is secured, that's what they strive for. So you have security. You got a fancy design. You got a great complement of cameras. You get some really cool software features. 120 hertz refresh rate, 5,000 milliamp battery, flagship performance, and a less than all the other flagship price. And then the anomaly that is the 599 Pixel 6, which I love. And I'm going to talk about that because I'm going to have my Pixel 6 review. Even though these are very fundamentally similar in a lot of ways, there's some special things about that phone for the price that really make it recommend for me if you're looking at a phone in that price range because it does so much so well and it undercuts basically everything that's out on the market. So that's all I got in this video. Please, if you have any questions or comments, go down to the comment section. We'll talk about it. I'll answer them and I'll get back with you. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.